Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank our witnesses for being here this evening. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Kazi, <clears throat> in your uh, testimony, you uh, summarize in your recommendations that uh, you suggest China should pass, or Congress, excuse me, Congress should pass legislation requiring banks to include their investment exposure to China in their annual reports and disclosures. Would you like to elaborate on that just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. There's a big problem right now where we don't know what exposure American banks have domestically, right? Forget knowing sectors, forget knowing specific industries. We just don't have data on even overall information, and I have asked around for it. Um, so I think you know we need to give, again, as I said earlier, tools to the right uh, bodies here, whether it be the SEC or another body, so that they can start collecting that information. Because before we can figure out which companies are getting American money that perhaps is a national security concern, let's even start by figuring out just how big the problem is. I thank you for that. And, you know, one of the things, I sit on the Financial Services Committee myself, and uh, along with Mr. Barr here, and, um, you know, we've had the, the, the CEOs of the five largest banks in front of us, and we've asked the question of them, you know, on your, on your website, you talk about all the social justice things you support and all the civil rights things you support in this country, yet you go to China and you ignore the genocide that's going on, you ignore the slave labor that's going on, and you basically ignore the fiduciary responsibility that you have to your investors by continuing to do business with the Chinese Communist Party. And so what do you have to say about that? And their answer is silence. They really can't give you a good answer. So, you know, my concern is we need to be forcing them somehow to, they have a fiduciary responsibility to give this information to their investors. Just like the Black Rocks, the Vanguard, State Streets of the world, when they invest your pension funds in China and Chinese companies, they need to be um, giving information to their investors saying, these are your risks. And I think um, Ms. Lans uh, Lonsberry was talking about the vectors of risk here, if I'm not mistaken. We've got to start talking about that and force these companies to do that. Do you have some ways that we can, can, can make that happen or some ideas or recommendations? Look, I think this is, you know, let's, let's start thinking about this uh, a little bit more. Um, where, you know, where, what are, we have to figure out um, what the right bodies are. To me, this is quite frankly very straightforward. Um, why is it that when they're disclosing during annual disclosures to the SEC, they do not put this out there, right? The information is there. The information specifically that, I, that I'm talking about in terms of exposure to different companies, it's not like they don't have it. Um, why are they not making this clear? And it can be done in a manner that doesn't jeopardize their uh, you know, distinct competitive advantages when it comes to investing while getting, I think, the government the proper oversight that it needs access to. Mr. Shum, um, thank you for being here. And we certainly empathize with your situation with your wife, sir. Um, Somebody may just made the comment about the CCP thinks nothing of arbitrarily seizing property. I believe you made that comment, if I'm not mistaken. Um, would you like to give us an idea? You know, we're, we sit here and we've done a military exercise, um, a war game exercise where China invaded Taiwan. And, you know, the exercise that we, the, our choices were that we actually sanctioned China. At that point, what do you think would happen to the, China, to the American businesses in China once they go into Taiwan and we sanction them. What would happen to all American businesses and assets that are there? I think they, the starting point is they are hostage to start, that's the starting point. And then the, the, the decision they're gonna make is, so essentially, is, uh, if you put it bluntly, is a rich hostage I'm gonna slaughter. That, you know, I'm, I would guess for their own sake, they may, not, they may not slaughter everybody, but they will selectively slaughter some for sure. Okay, with regards to the business, are you talking about individuals or businesses there? Yes, I'm talking about business. Business, okay, so I'm they're just... going to absorb the business, they're going to nationalize all the businesses is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Um, just to give you an example, I mean, so my ex-wife, she was uh, never accused of anything, never been charged with anything. She disappeared for four years. She came out, you know, she was released on the eve, uh, she came out on the eve of my book publishing to come out and call me. And then one of the projects we did was uh, we developed Bulgaria Hotel in Beijing. So one of the most luxury hotels uh, in China. And it's been taken. And there's no explanation, no process, no nothing. Gone. So it would, it, would, it would seem to me that that should also be another risk that should be disclosed by investment 
managers, asset managers, banks, anybody who invests and does business in China to their stockholders, their shareholders, their investors. Would you not, uh, this, this sort of activity that this thing could happen to, in a way that they could lose all of their money? Yes. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.